Good morning and happy Sabbath. Welcome to Willsden um, Sabbath School. Uh, we'll be looking at um, Lesson 12, um, The Restless, Reluctant Prophet. Um, before we start, just let's have a word of prayer. Holy One of Israel, creator of all flesh, revealer of all truth, descender of true prophets, we thank you for the written word that he has given us to your inspired prophet. As we are about to open the sacred page, we pray that thy Holy Spirit may open the mind of our understanding. Whatever you reveal, we pray that our heart may be receptive, that your name may be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now I want to say welcome to all those online. You can share as usual in our study and um, send in your answers or share your thoughts. It's delighted once again to be in the house of God. Amen. 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 We'll be looking at the mercy of God, the reluctant, restless prophet, and the wicked city of Nineveh. The historical content, what we're about to study, parallel our present reality. So I'll just be bullet, po bullet pointing um, some of the things that I gleaned from the study here. The, the Ninevites has almost filled up their cup of iniquity. And so God, who has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, commissioned the prophet Jonah to warn these wicked inhabitants. Jonah was a Hebrew prophet. We first see him in um, 2 Kings 22-23. Uh, he was a prophet from the northern kingdom of Israel. <laughs> But this time he was called and sent to Nineveh to warn a pagan nation, a nation who is an enemy to Israel, a nation who is cruel, a nation who does not respect or follow the path of righteousness. And so Jonah was reluctant to go to this place to give the mandate that God has given him. And so he decided to go to Joppa. He, pay, he pays passage. And instead of going west, he decided to go east. Um, running away from God, you can run you can hide, but you can't hide away from the omnipresent. Amen? Now, in order for Jonah to be a prophet, he must be one who walking with the Lord, yes? Why is it he was so reluctant to go on this mission? I've just read the state of the city. Is anyone else have any idea why Jonah was reluctant to go to Nineveh? Because Nineveh was very, very Thank you, Elder Charles. Yes, Jonah was certainly lacking in that way. He failed to understand that when God called him, God would protect him and God would go before him. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're watching the chat, are you? You're watching. 
converted. Jonah knew that that was a hard task. Why am I wasting my time? God is asking me to save these people who cannot be saved, according to Jonah. So he felt that it was a wasted effort to waste his time to go down there and preach to these godless people. Um, And that is why he thought, I'm not wasting my time. Um, Sometimes that happened in in the times in which we live. Why am I going to preach to that prostitute? She's not going to do it. Okay, can I just respond to that for you? Um, when God called, God knows the outcome. God knows the heart. Our duty is to go. Jonah did not know. Jonah perceived. Go on, Elder. I, I also think, in addition to what Elder Leslie said, I think um, there is a flip side to that. Because I believe Jonah, Jonah recognized the fact that God is a is a, a merciful God. And, and Jonah was very, very concerned about his own standing. Um, he was concerned about what people would think about him because he was going to go and preach that God is going to destroy the city in any way. And then all the people turn and accept God and then God recant and do not destroy the city. Then he would look like a false prophet. And so he was concerned about his image. And so he decided, you know what? It's better not to go. Thank you. And And the story is also about how God is passionate, very passionate about saving lost people. And it says he will do whatever God takes to redeem his people and the, stone, the story of Jonah is not only about saving Nineveh, but it's also saving Jonah, the reluctant prophet. Amen. The lesson highlight that Jonah highlighted that Jonah wasn't an inexperienced prophet. He was quite experienced. But then I begin to wonder how much he understood about God's about God because here's the prophet who says yes I will go and then try to run away from the commitment that he made to God does he know did, did he realize that he couldn't hide from God amen thank you um, Jonah to be a prophet you should be acquainted with the word of God right And Jonah did not read John 3, 16. He did not read Ezekiel 33, 11, where God says that he had no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked should turn. And he did not read Psalms 139, 7, that says, um, wherever you go, though you take the wings of the man to the depths of the sea, God is there. I don't believe that Jonah don't know. I believe that when you, get, when you are in a rebellious state, the mind becomes insane. And you do things out of the ordinary. Because you're not walking in the light that has been revealed. So your mind becomes clouded. And so Jonah believed that he could run from God, but God sent a storm to show his omnipotent, Right? Now, when we look at Jonah's situation, refusing to go and to minister to a different nation, probably because of prejudice, probably because the enemy to Israel, and he just desired their destruction, right? How does that translate into today's reality? If God says, 
you should go in the ghetto where there's gun violence, crime violence, where places that people is not so favorable. Are we choose to go to the nice places or are we quickly want to go to the place where the message is needed most, emergency cases? Can I say that? <clears throat> yeah, I think that's a very, very important point you raised there, Elder. Because for what I can see, many Christians I know better than Jonah. They talk about the bad things that's happening out in the community. They talk about knife crime. They talk about drugs. They talk about all these things. But when it comes to going into the community and dealing with those issues, they will, they will only talk about it, but they will not really do what they're supposed to do. Is that lack of faith, reluctant, rebellion? What is it? Are we in agreement with Elder? that we don't go the places where we're supposed to go, or we don't go none at all. <clears throat> I don't agree with Ella Clarence, sorry. <laughs> I think that those are the communities where people um, witness more than in more affluent places. If you go in the more affluent places of our society, um, the church is as event um, sort of abandon those areas. If you go into those communities, you will not find churches. If you go into poor, crime-ridden areas, that is where you find a lot of the um, social gospel is being preached. A lot of effort, like food banks and other efforts, is being carried out by the church. So I think the church is present more in these deprived areas than they are in the affluent areas. So it is not those areas that are abandoned by the church, but rather the affluent areas. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this one's from the YouTube. It says, I think Jonah represents us all in that whenever God instructs us, we process it first. Mm. We shouldn't process it we are limited in seeing the end results. In fact, carnal minds can't evaluate God. Amen, amen. God already prepared a way before he sent us, who we call he equips, and therefore we should be ready to go. Uh, we, we must know the God in whom we serve, that he's able to protect and he's able to bring fruition to what he has sent us to um, to do. Okay, so Jonah bought his vessel and he on his way 220,000 miles away from where he's supposed to go, going in the opposite direction. So God sent a storm to wake Jonah up, to show his omnipresent. Not only that, he appointed also a fish to take him back to where he has been coming from take him back to the direction that he's supposed to go. Now, when we disobey it, not every storm, God will send storms in our life, right? And the storm is not to destroy us, but it's to save us. So this storm was a saving storm. This fish was to transport Jonah back. So God was teaching Jonah a lesson. Yes? Because before he prays, God preserved him in the, in, the, in the fish belly. Well, he probably prayed on his way down. But we see that in every circumstances that we faced in life, we must first consult he who is able to deliver us. Yes? So Jonah on his way down in the fish belly spent three days then he prayed. And in Jonah 2, we see that he lifted his eyes in repentance to the temple, to the sanctuary. Psalm 77 um, verse 13 says, thy way, O Lord, is in the sanctuary. And this is where Jonah directs his prayer straight to God's throne room. And God answers his prayer. And in his mercy, the fish spit Jonah out. 
and God called him the second time to go and deliver the same message. The message was in one sentence. In 40 days, Nineveh shall be overthrown. One sentence that Jonah needed to carry. That was not a burden, right? Didn't need to carry a whole one hour sermon, just one sentence. Yes, Ella. Nobody, nobody, um, if you like, choose to be a prophet. I can't just get up and decide I'm going to be a prophet. Um, God is the one who calls you to be a prophet. Um, Jonah was specifically called, and and he had a relationship with God, and mm-hmm. and uh, for sure God had um, given him all that he needed to have. The question is, the question is, um, and this relates to perhaps a little bit before you made a point about the fish. Um, are we? Someone says we. Jonah represents us, but are we? like Jonah, sent specifically on a task, given that Jonah was called specifically to go to this specific place and was given a specific message that in, uh, in 40 days, this place will be destroyed. Um, is it the same as we are called to go out into the community? Or is there a, a difference between the two calls? Okay. Jonah was one individual and the whole city, which was the biggest reformation or revival has taken place. That's still in the Guinness Book of Record. There hasn't nothing to compare with a whole city, the king and everyone turned to God. But God has called us in Matthew 28, 19 and 20, go ye in all the world. So while Jonah was called to go to a specific city, to spread the good news of, to tell of the people to repent, God is also called us who are called by his name. You don't have to be a prophet, but you are called, you are sent to the world to tell of God's saving grace and the destruction that will take the world when Jesus returns. So we are all called, we are all sent to tell of the good news of salvation that soul may be repented. Does that answer the question, Elder? Morning, brother. Good morning. How I look at how I look at this that um, when I study this lesson, it shows me that the creatures that God created is more willing to do God's bid than human being. Because that fish that was in the ocean, I think here, when the water was troubled, the fish was right along the boat. Because as soon as Jonah said to them, Mm. throw me over in the water, and the water will cease, The, the, the storm will cease. And what I thought, I said, well, the fish was right there. God directly the pit, stay there. Soon as he go over, swallow him. You see, so the fish was very important because God created everything and everything is supposed to follow in God's way. So we must be obedient. Amen. Thank you for that. The ox know their master, but Israel knew not their God. The heaven declare God's glory, and man sin and come short of the glory of God. When God said to Jonah, arise and go to Nineveh, was it that he did know he, he, he didn't know which direction Nineveh is? When he arrives, God said, go to the house then. Are you going to kill Gilbert? Gilbert? Mm-hmm. You see? So that same name simply means that he, although he put, he, he know, he's a prophet and he knows what's what, what, what going to happen. But because him, he believed that, I don't know if he believed that God would, would save him or he would hide from God. Remember when, when 
chief master came up and said to me, why sleep is down? Mm -hmm. He didn't go to anyone, but he got to one man. I said, why sleep is down? Down. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's where, that's where Jonah's trouble started to, start to come from. You see? Because Jonah, that's the time Jonah go to say, why, what am I doing here? God didn't say I'm to come, I'm, I'm to come here, and I'm going the wrong way. Mm. You see? So don't, don't matter what we do, where God sent us, don't matter try, if God sent us, don't matter try to hide, because you cannot hide from God. And what is good, ask you to do. Amen. So we, we hide in um, omission, commission, we hide in various ways. So. Yes. Um, when Jonah entered the city, he just had one, well, the sentence. In 40 days, you're going to be destroyed. So they must have had some idea before that, else they wouldn't have repented so quickly. Because Jonah's message didn't point to God, it didn't point to anything else, just said in 40 days you're going to be destroyed. So maybe mm -hmm. they have had prayer warning that this was going to happen, because they wouldn't have repented so easy, so quickly. Um, possible they could hear about the fish that spit out the man on the ocean and this was Jonah and probably still have those mocking him and they can see it, I don't know. Yes. Sorry, the congregation is getting up there before me, <laughs> so I've got to work out which one. Um, just a couple of um, comments. I think God wants us to have his mind and see the need, um, sorry, and see the needs where you are. Um, I'm going to miss that one out. Let me just go to this last one. We are mandated to do God's will above our own desires. This is our daily struggle. Lesson learned. Obedience is the ultimate message here. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God mine is to do the will of the Father. Come on. Just, just a quick comment. Um, I think that the story of Jonah was sort of like a type of Jesus's mission. This is the first time and the only time in the Bible we have a case where an entire city was converted. I mean, why did God pick Nineveh? There were sinful people in the world everywhere, but God, why would God select Nineveh? And why would, at the preaching of a, of a, of a prophet, everyone was converted? And the Bible was at stake to say how evil these people of, of Nineveh was. However, remember in the New Testament, Jesus himself said that the last generation will look for signs, but the only sign that they would receive was the sign of the prophet Jonah. I think that Jonah's story represented Christ's story of trying to rescue a sinful world. And back to Elder. Keith's question, and how it might be related to what I'm saying, is the work of Jonah was specifically associated with the work of Jesus. I don't know if me as an individual, Elder Keith, can say that I represent or I follow in the footsteps of Jonah in my mission to the world. I am not sure I can say that. I can think that um, Jonah was specially uh, a type of who Jesus and the work of Jesus. God, man see on the outside, but God sees the heart. He don't know the heart of people, no matter what situation, condition, state they're in. God knows the heart. Our duty is to tell them of Christ. God knows, because that message was designed to bring about the change. And God knew that the people would repent it, because he declared the end from the beginning, Sister Ruth. Happy Sabbath. Now, here, God equipped Jonah to go and give a message, and he followed through, but God frightened and ran away. And as he ran away, you know, God knows our thoughts. God knows our secrets. And for him running away, he suffered the consequences of staying in the fishing belly for three days. And these three days references Jesus' resurrection and his, his death and his resurrection. Amen. So, to not obey God, to be rebellious, there's consequences. 
as the songwriter say, oh, what needless pain we bear, or because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. So we are learning today to be obedient. And wherever God sent us, we must go, because he already prepared a way for the people to accept him. We need to sow the seed. He's dealing with the heart. We need to just sow the seed. Uh, Monday says, uh, three days rest. But um, when I look in um, Jonah 2, what I see here in Jonah 2 and 2, I see unrest. It says he was afflicted. And in verse 4, it says, um, in verse 7, it says, my soul fainted. And that's when he cries out in the belly of the fish. And God commands the fish to spit him out. So this shows us how merciful God is. Even when we disobedient and we don't follow the instruction and the counsel that he gave to us, if we turn to him in prayer, he will hear us, providing that the heart is now set to do his will. Amen. Just a short one. Jonah had pride, albeit false pride, thinking what people might say about him if he was wrong. But he needed to trust God. Yeah. Amen. So, you know, Isaiah, he says that when he sees the glory and the purity of God, he said, I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell amongst people, uh, unclean people. Um, talking about the, the, the sinful habits and nature of man. And so even prophet himself does not come up to the measure that God intended humanity to be. We can see that God shows us from the highest to the lowest. That when we take our eyes off God, when we don't follow in his path, then the devil can take us in the next direction. So no matter who you are, what profession, um, qualification, status you have in life, God is your source of strength. And he's the one that is able to keep you. And he's the one that directs our parts. Um, the step of a good man is hardened by the Lord. So, um, so Jonah face and rest. He cries out, and he was delivered. Amen. You need to say something. And that. yeah, um, I agree with um, Elder Leslie that Jonah was really pointing to Jesus. However, the story of Jonah. Jonah, although Jonah was used as an example, God was speaking to us through Jonah. Mm. As we see, Jonah was called to save one city, but Jesus is now asking us to go out to the world, to every corner, to every village, to everywhere that we can go, mm. to save as many people as we can and to take his message to them. So I think that Jonah was the example, but the message is for us in this time. It's also clearly a message for us. Sometimes God has a work for us to do, and we sometimes hesitate to do it. Hence, daily, uh, we have to die to self and let our Father use us to do his will, no matter how uncomfortable that may make us. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Um, you know, Jonah was a Hebrew. And it was fine when God sent him to the northern kingdom or to Judah, or wherever God sent him within the body of Israel. He was comfortable with that. But when God sent him outside of the body of Israel, then it becomes a problem. Is that so with us? We just witness the people that look like us. Are we just witness the people that look like us? We don't witness to... Our European brothers, the Asian, the Chinese, and all of that, we, is, that, is that also a problem within 
within us as well. Elder Paul, that's exactly what I was try- going to say. Jonah was obedient, but then he had to forgive the Ninevites. The Ninevites captured Jew- Jew- the Judah people. They enslaved them. So we can be obedient, but we have to forgive. And I think Jonah found it hard to forgive the Ninevites. He knew what they were, what they'd done. They killed the people. They did atrocities. And so we, what if someone asked me to go and, and witness to someone who had murdered all my family? How would I feel to go, you know, someone killed my son. How would I feel, to, would I be able to forgive them and go and witness and draw them to God? I think that's part of uh, obedience as well as the forgiveness of others. Thank you for that. The Bible says you must love your enemies. And therefore, we have to love the way God loves. He send the rain on the just and the unjust. Yeah, I do believe that Jonah had a number of personal problems and a number of personal issues. Um, you know, if we were told to go into Afghanistan now, hmm. many of us would shy away from oh, that. Pastors yes. would definitely shy away from that. Yes. Because the first thing on their mind is their death. They're mm. certainly not going to come out alive. And that's one of the issues I think Jonah had as well. But he do, did have this, these prejudices. And I think Jonah undermined the power of God to save. You know, um, you know, um, why should God bother about saving them? You know, they don't deserve being saved. You know, why should we bother about saving? Why, what hope of that drunken person? Because they, or that drug addict is coming into the church. Mm. Because what you see them is a bad influence. Yeah. We already tick the boxes and say, you know, that person is not going to be, we've got to keep an eye on that person. Because we, we, we know what influence, but what bad influence that person is going to have on us. And when you look at Israel compared with the, the, uh, the Ninevites, who was worse? I don't think God's people was any better than, than mm. those God was trying to save. That's right. Because they have the law, the oracles, they see God's glory, they should have been better. But the Ninevites repent and one sentence. Isn't that marvelous? Okay, so when he give the message, he find himself a nice spot to see, oh, God is going to destroy this place. You know? He knows about, oh, God destroy the antediluvian world and Sodom and all of that. So he's sitting there looking now to see, oh, God is going to destroy this place. And to his surprise, nothing happened. He get upset. He get angry. Because he's looking forward for these people to be destroyed. Uh, by the way, the enemy of Israel anyway. We want them flattened. Get them out of the way. They are our enemies. And we sometimes like that. When people, our enemies, we just want God to just take them off the face of the earth. We haven't got no compassion to say, even though you've done me wrong, I forgive you. And the Lord love you. And we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Our, our we, we are now learning. Uh, many things from this historical event that take place. And God, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the sun, God sent, um, uh, what, what, what's the name of it? The girl, the girl, the things that sheltered him. Girl, 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 yes. And that covers Jonah. And then God sent the worm to eat it up. And uh, Jonah was upset. And God is saying, why did you upset? Uh, the, the people, there's so much people in that city that 200,000 that don't know they left from their right, meaning they have no spiritual concept and understanding of how to behave, how to live, how to function. And they repented in sackcloth, showing humility and turned to me. And you, I show you mercy in the fish belly save your life and now you don't want me to show mercy to these people and people is like that we want God to show us mercy but we don't want God to show mercy to other people right you're not supposed to be like that so what we can um, glean from that 
uh, I just go to what Brother Leslie was saying about Jonah was in the fish belly for three days. Christ was in the heart of the earth when he was stood at Gethsemane. That was when his persecution begins. So um, Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, he raised up Sunday morning. So that makes it three day and three night. He was in the, um, the fish belly. Christ um, <clears throat> began his ministry at the River Jordan. He was anointed. He went into the wilderness for 40 days. Jonah announced um, God is going to um, destroy Nineveh in 40 days. Um, Jonah was spit out of the fish belly. Christ was resurrected. And um, we see there's a lot of comparison here where Jonah um, illustrates Christ's um, death and his resurrection and also his, his, his ministry. Okay, just going to wrap up. So it was a two-way street. Yeah? Jonah also need to find, even though he know God, but he need a closer walk. Yeah? He need to understand who God is and to know that God is a just God and God desire to save all humanity. And therefore, none is exempt from salvation. Everyone God desired to be repented, to receive salvation and saving grace. And Jonah was lacked in that. He was lacking his understanding, probably, that only Israelite was favorable and no one else. And therefore, we must not lapse into that situation to believe that because we keep Sabbath and we claim to be commandment keepers, God have his people everywhere. Amen? And they need to be reached with our love, our message, and our way of life. Thank you for listening. May God bless you as you continue to give him the praise, the thanks, the honor, and the glory. Amen.